Hey there, Edmonton Real Estate Investor Association. It's Ivan Abler here, your president. Sorry I couldn't be on today's uh, presentation, but I, I did want to uh, contribute to uh, to the presentation and uh, specifically about the real estate market. Um, real estate market uh, compared to 2020, uh, was up uh, like 45% in 2021. Um, anybody who was looking to buy or sell, that's not a big surprise. Uh, everything was being snapped up. Uh, statistically, the, the second half of the year was was down, um, I think close to 15% from the first half. The first half of the year was very strong. And, and I anticipate that the first six months of 2022 is going to be tremendously hot uh, so my suggestions to you and my advice is to to tread carefully uh, if you're buying uh, make sure you're buying the right type of property in the you know at, in, in the right neighborhoods and you know for the right price uh, as well if uh, you're selling property and flipping property you know you want to maximize your 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 return so uh, be strategic about that uh, uh, for the group, uh, I'll, I'll let everybody you know tap into uh, to a website I have that uh, will help you with with values, homevaluecheck.ca, and I'll put it up on here somewhere. Uh, and uh, figure out what your value is now, and then and maybe what your value is in in three months uh, if you're thinking about selling. Um, yeah, so. Uh, the following video is my real estate coach, uh, and Richard does a great job uh, explaining how 2021 looked statistically and uh, and comparing it to the last five years. Uh, so uh, enjoy and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm here to help. Hey everyone, Richard Robbins here. Hope you're doing great. Well, we have a very exciting market update for you in January as we talk about what happened last year in 2021 in Edmonton. And I think you're going to find some of these numbers very interesting. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back five years and I'm going to compare the total number of sales over the last five years. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take last year and I'm going to break it down from the first six months to the last six months. And I think you're going to find that very interesting. We'll also look at, you know, months of inventory over the last five years. And we're also going to have a look at your average price over the last five years. And then the last slide is something I created that you might want to use if you're speaking to buyers and speaking to sellers to show them sort of the trends of last year. So I think you're going to find it very, very useful. So saying that, let's go ahead and get started and have a look at the numbers. So here's your last five years in total sales. You can see that obviously you had 24,706 sales in 2021, which by the way, that's up 40 5% over the previous year. So if you have a look at the four previous years, 2017 to 2021, your sales were pretty well the same. It wasn't a, a dramatic change in the number of sales. And then all of a sudden, it jumped up a lot last year. Now, we all know that, you know, right across Canada, you know, Alberta has recovered very well uh, from where it was before in terms of what it did in 2021. But what we're hearing from everybody right now is, oh, there's a shortage of inventory, shortage of inventory, shortage of inventory. And I would suggest to you that in your marketplace, what you're seeing is certain property types have a severe shortage of inventory, affordable detached homes, you probably have a shortage of inventory, multiple offers, right? Well, then you probably look at other segments, like maybe the condominium segment, that the market's gotten better, it's definitely recovered a little bit, but in most cases, it's not going to be a severe shortage of inventory. But all I'm hearing from everybody is, oh, there's no inventory, no inventory, no inventory. But I want you to think about this. If you did 45% more sales in 2021 than you did in 2020, there was lots of inventory, wasn't there? Because there had to be, because there had to be a listing for 24,070, 706 sales. So it takes one listing for one sale. So in other words, we actually had lots of inventory, 
because we had 45% more sales. What we had was unbelievable buyer demand. That's what we had. So when I hear everybody's going, there's no inventory, that is a fact. Inventory is very low, there's no question. But what we can't be thinking about is that there was less inventory than there was in previous years because otherwise we could have never gotten to 24,706 sales. So I hope you get that, you know, just that mentality of what I'm trying to communicate there for you. But look at this. These are the numbers January through the end of June. And then, of course, July through the end of December. So you can see that your sales were actually down about 17 percent in the second half of 2021. And you probably felt that. You probably felt, you know, the first half of the year, like we had a jump start in January. It was crazy. And if you think about it, at the end of 2020, the market got really strong. It was weaker at first, got really strong towards the end of the year in 2020. And then it continued through the first half of 2021. And then it started to tail off. Still very strong, by the way, but started to tail off a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens as we move into 2022. So moving to months of inventory. Now, this is your supply and demand. You've heard me talk about this. This is a critical number to determine which way your prices are going. Your prices are going up, your prices are stable, your prices are going down. So obviously, you know, if we get four to six months of inventory, that's a balanced market. Above six is a buyer's market. Below four is going to be a seller's market. So you can see what you have here. If we go back and if we look the last five years, you know, 2018, you got 8.7 months of inventory. Well, look at this. If you get 8.7 months of inventory, what happens? See how prices drop from 372 down to 368 and then down again? You see how that works? So it's interesting. You had high inventory 18 and 19. And what happened to your prices? Your prices went down. You see that? And then because we had four and a half months of inventory in 2020. Now, this is an average throughout the year. There were some months that had less or more than others. But have a look at the price. So what happened? Four and a half months, your, your market gained a little bit, not much. It went up to you know, $5,000, which is really not very much. But then if we look at what happened here, we went down to 3.4 months of inventory, the lowest you've had in the last five years. And what, of course, happened to your prices? Went up to 385, which was a price increase of 6%. So can you see how your months of inventory is the indicator as to what's going on with your prices? So it's you can talk to buyers and sellers about this. And you can actually create you know, say a, a graph that is sort of a line graph that shows them what's going on with months of inventory. What direction are they going? What is, what is the trending direction of prices based on months of inventory? Uh, so if we go back to prices, we can see right now we're sitting about 385, obviously the highest it's been in a number of years, which is really good. Now this chart here that I created for you because you can actually download these slides. You're welcome to use these slides in your presentations. That's why we create it. Uh, I'm not gonna go through this, but basically what this is, this is a slide that shows you from January to the end of December of 2021, it shows you the total sales for each month, the active listings for each month, the month of inventory, months of inventory for each month, also average price and days in the market. And from this, you could create a line graph, couldn't you, of months of inventory and show the trends. If you look here, you can see in March and April, look at you're down to 2.6 months of inventory. Here you're at 2.5 months of inventory. You know, and then we started to rise and it sort of, you know, continued to rise till we get into the end of the year when your inventory starts to drop off, not as many listings, and uh, then it starts to drop down again. So.